human after all I'm only human after all Don't put your blame on me Don't put your blame on me Children. Oh, well. oh, and bone fragility in India. Oh, 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 <laughs> okay, registration has officially opened. We have queues of people lining up to get their badges. Let's all go. Here we go. You're making me forget the. <laughs> okay. I think you are. Okay. My last name is Young. Right, so watch me. Why are you working? Okay. So here we are, the calm before the storm. Some weird monster program playing. Our largest conference to date. I mean, it's so big I can't even see down there. Four screens, we used to have two. And we have an overflow room because we couldn't fit anyone, we couldn't fit everyone in here. Wow. Next year our capacity is 1,300 people. And you know what? I think we'll fill it. Okay, so in here we have the hedge study. We have everyone getting ready. There's uh, Dr. Hakeem, Dr. Gandhi. We've got people waiting already. Fantastic. How are we doing? Okay. Oh, this is, oh, so this is our local anesthetic study. It is running as well, which is incredible, which was um, launched out of our comorbidity coalition, the group decided on research priorities for the EDS and HSD community and local anaesthetics came very, very high up. So now, here we are, it's come to a reality headed by Dr. Satish Raj. Um, not sure if Satish is in here. Hi, team. Do you mind being filmed? Tell us a little bit more about this study. Um, sure, yeah. So, here we um, go. Hey. So we know in um Ehlers-Danlos syndrome that some people report that local anesthetic doesn't work for them. So what we're doing is testing um, testing that out. So we have two different local anesthetics as well as um, something that isn't an anesthetic and so we're going to be just doing a little injection under the skin and then um, uh, just sort of touching and seeing how you, how um, the sensation is with the anesthetic versus not. So Fantastic. Um, yeah. This is going to be so helpful to so many people. You have no idea. We're so grateful. And, and, and I was just explaining that the reason this came to life is Dr. Satish Raj is on our comorbidity coalition, and that is comprised of patient experts, patient organizations, and experts. And we discussed what the research priority areas would be for the EDS and HSD community. And this was one of the biggest priorities. So you have no idea how many people are waiting to find out what comes out of this. So it's wonderful. So I'll leave you to this. It all looks like a little bit scary, <laughs> but very, very important. So um, I'll leave you to it, but thank you so much. Bye-bye. Out here, oh, look, it's the hedge team. I'm just gonna still them before you get there. Hey, hedge team, how are we doing? How many people, we've got just under 100 people coming through, right, in the next few days? Absolutely incredible. This looks very professional. Look at you guys, look at you, fantastic. And then we go through here, fabulous, here we go. We have people here, we have our phlebotomists, we have people consenting. Hello. You're gonna be helping drawing blood today. Yes. Yeah, so EDS people don't have good veins. So good luck, but so far, all the head studies, we have not had any problems because you guys have been awesome. So I'm sure that will continue as well. We have beds in case anyone feels a bit dizzy having their blood taken, but I have no hesitation it will be all good. So thank you for being part of this study. It's very exciting, very exciting. Okay, and then 
And here, this is where the clinicians will be doing their assessments. Indeed. Okay, well, we'll leave you to it. Oh, height and arm span. Oh, look at that. That is, <laughs> that is very high tech, but all you need. It's all you need. Absolutely. Okay, Hedge, let's do it. morning from Nashville, 6.30 in the morning, time for breakfast. It's the last day of the patient conference. Three more days ahead though. So, let's do this. One thing that unites so many people living with EDS and HSD is just how long that journey is. And not how long it is, but how harrowing it can be as well. And I think that that is something for not just our, our community to take, like, take into their, their minds, but critically healthcare professionals. When someone living with these conditions walks into your room, they have been on a diagnostic odyssey and it's been hard and it's been long. If you imagine anyone, anyone in the world, old, young, healthy, sane, insane, whatever you want to call it, every single person in the world, if you imagine that they have spent years, decades sometimes, seeking an answer for the reason that they're feeling everything, having chronic pain, chronic fatigue, a myriad of multi-systemic issues, being accused of being a hypochondriac, being questioned constantly, every day, no validation. They finally get a diagnosis and they're told they've got something that has no cure, very little treatment options, very little management, and then you're left back out there in the wilderness. How do you not need psychological support to deal with that? I don't know anyone that would be able to go, cool, thanks, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go off and live my life. It's impossible. So don't be threatened by the fact that we are pushing hard that psycholo psychological support should be offered to everyone diagnosed with EDS, HSD, and every single chronic and rare disease. I don't just speak publicly about EDS and HSD, I, I represent as many rare conditions, chronic conditions as I can. And it's the same everywhere. This isn't special for EDS and HSD. When you go and you get diagnosed, I mean, let's, let's not even discuss about the amount of physical options that are not offered. We know we have that issue. People should be offered a full MDT team. They should be offered all the physical care and management they need. But they should also be offered the psychological management they need to be able to take on what they have to deal with every day for the rest of their life. So don't be scared. That is the biggest message I want everybody to take from this. Don't think that if you need psychological support, CBT, mindfulness, meditation, counselling, whatever option it comes in, that that doesn't validate your very, very physical, real problem. It is not in your head. Hello from Nashville. Look at that. Woo! We're back from Nashville and we are with the amazing Katie, which you may know as the translucent one on social media. And Katie, this is your first 
a society conference, right? It is, yeah. Amazing. So you just arrived because we've yeah. got a few meetings with the Vets Collaborative this weekend. But tell me what it was like being there today for the first time. Um, it was kind of cool, like definitely seeing other people with other forms of other Sandler syndrome was really cool. And then I really loved having Annie speak about her story at lunch. Um, I interviewed her on my podcast, not about a year ago now actually about her story and it was really cool to see her get up and talk about her story in front of the whole room so so tell everyone when you were diagnosed with beds i was diagnosed with beds in 2017 and we call it an odyssey because that was like over a year of an undiagnosed dissecting artery um, that would put me in a pain management clinic before i even knew i had beds mm -hmm. so finally got diagnosed in 2017 2017 yeah. and, and you're she's like a very big part of what is the Vets Collaborative and you'll probably do a much better job than me in explaining what the Vets Collaborative is. Sure so the Vets Collaborative is a group of researchers and patients and other stakeholders that have an investment you know an emotional investment or otherwise in research for vets and we get together and we develop research for vets really like this whole year we've been preparing to design a trial and we are meeting on Sunday to design a trial for potential treatments for vets. And all of this is really patient-led, it's patient-centered. So having the patients there as part of the calls every every other week, and then I'm part of the advisory board. So every week I'm on a call with the Vets Collaborative and we're furthering research for vets, but in the direction that patients want it to go. And so for, for people out there that may be living with vascular EDS, I know that we have a lot of people following us from all over the world, what, how can they reach out to you? How can they get connected to this incredibly strong community? <laughs> I'm everywhere. You'll find me everywhere. But um, on YouTube, it's at Translucent1. And I'm also on Twitter. You can find me there. I think it's like the dot translucent one or something like You're that. You're looking at me like I, I know. know. I mean, I'm I like, what is it, Laura? Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, you can YouTube translucent one. You can find the podcast on your podcast player or on the internet. It's called Staying Connected. So if you go to your podcast player and search for Staying Connected, you should find it. It's a little podcast that has a picture of the circle of Willis on it, and he's like waving. Um, and then. The YouTube channels like YouTube slash translucent one or translucent one dot blog. Wonderful. It is Friday and we're nearly at the end, but today it is Health Professionals Day at the conference. And we've got like 150 people in there, which is absolutely awesome. So let's sneak in and see what they're up to. From Nashville. It is Saturday and everyone has gone home. Um, we are still left and we are putting on the With Defy our Foundation, the Vascular EDS Scientific Meeting. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty exhausted, but this weekend's really important. So looking forward to today and tomorrow. Let's go. Sunday, Nashville. Ah, you know what that means? I'm going home. But yeah, though. First, it's the Vets Collaborative Meeting, which is going to be awesome. And then, I get to go home. 
it's been a long old week, but a brilliant one, an incredible one, a life-changing one for some, for all, I think, actually. And this weekend's been incredible too, and I'm exhausted, but totally buzzing, inspired, I'm ready for next year. What this place is like at 6.15 in the morning, before anyone else is mad enough to be up. Got my peppermint tea. I'm gonna go and see if AV is set up. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited for my alarm not going off at 5.30 in the morning. Dreaming of a cuddle with a Ripley bear in bed. Getting ready. Final day of doing this, Carissa. Yay! How's it feel? <laughs> I've been at this hotel for over a week now. <laughs> Delirium. Right? Oh my god, this thing is heavy. <laughs> okay, world. We're almost ready for you. My wife has to lift everything for me. But Nashville, we out. home and I'm so tired and I slept until noon today noon and I'm not sure if you can hear my wife's cello playing but that was my wake-up call and it's a good job because I have an afternoon full of calls but it's hard to put into words the exhaustion you feel from one of these events I mean it's tiring enough for people that attend them the pace the amount to take in but having to run one and give it all your all every minute of every day, give everyone the same time and energy that wants to talk to you and meet you. And then to make sure all the, um, sorry, excuse me, phone was getting heavy. Um, make sure you give all the speakers, you know, the care and, and, uh, and information and attention that they need. And we got in, to Nashville on the Saturday and then we had two days of prep and then it started Monday we had a board meeting so that wasn't even a down day and then the conference was Tuesday finished on Thursday for patients and then we didn't stop we then had professionals day 150 professionals which is incredible double what we had last year and then it didn't stop again then we had on Saturday the Vascular EDS Scientific Day. And then it didn't stop. And then on Sunday we had the Vascular EDS Collaborative Meeting. And every meeting and every part of each broken down bit of that whole week was as important as the other and required full attention and, and energy, like I said. And you don't realise how exhausted you are until you finally start. And when got on the plane on Sunday night finally. Firstly I was just so excited to go home. I felt like I'd been away forever. And I slept the whole way home pretty much. So tired. And then landed and then the trick with jet lag is you can't sleep because that's it, you'll be screwed. So fighting the exhaustion massively, although there were a few times where I just suddenly I was like, oh I'm asleep. And then you have to wake up again. But then last night it was Monday night. Now, for those who haven't heard me talk about it before, every Monday night for the past 22 years, I get together with the same group of girls from school. We, um, we just have fun, drink tea and gossip. And last night, the first of us turned 40. 
So we had a big dinner to get to. And life doesn't stop just because you're away working. So by the time I finally got into bed last night, which was close to midnight, I was absolutely done for. And so sleeping till noon today has been a much needed restorative morning. So up now, more calls. And as always, life goes on. Coming home from Nashville, I got lots of gifts. I got this that I found, and I like my collections of these little guys, and teddies, and I keep everything because I'm sentimental and silly like that. But also I think people put a lot of thought into things. So you can see this was this really cute. There's this EDS Rocks um, group that leave rocks everywhere for people to find. Um, see here and there was one here that was given to me by someone who found it and it says issues with my tissues and it, on the case on the way back it broke you can see that it broke there on the back and at the front and i am now super gluing it all back together because these little things mean things to me and i keep them all cards gifts everything so in about five minutes this will all look like it did when it was found. And I will keep it like everything else. Good, isn't it? Thank you, guys. I will post to you. Hey, everyone. Bonjour from France. So, left Nashville worked at home for a bit and now I'm in beautiful south of France for a week and then I'm going to Paris and then Lille and I am switching off and having a much needed vacation. So thank you all for joining us this month. Thank you to all those that came to Nashville to help us make it the biggest conference today and I'll see you all in September. Remember to subscribe.